All right, y'all, welcome back to Outside the Levees. I am your host, Jared Serenay, and I am down here in beautiful St. Bernard Parish, Louisiana, hanging out at Happiness Bayou Tours. This is a place in St. Bernard where you can come, whether you like hunting or fishing or not, you can come ride around on a boat and get a taste of authentic Louisiana Bayou lifestyle. Now this place is run by my buddy George Allnett and his wife Samantha, and George lives it 100%. He is a full-time commercial crabber. He catches crabs out here in this area, and then he also cooks them right here at their little spot. Y'all gotta come check this place out. They'll take you out to see alligators. They'll take you out to see the lifestyle, to see the swamp. Come see them. Let's go check it out. All right, y'all, that's a giant ice bath for these crabs. Mr. George is gonna be boiling. Yep. I bet he boils a lot of them. He's got some hungry patrons that can be here later, ready to eat crabs on a fried day. Right, what you got here, Mr. George? This is all number two. Um, Blue crabs. Wow, when you caught these? Yesterday evening. No kidding. This little pack, this is my mark, so I know what crate I got. <laughs> wow. I think they all look the same, you know. And they are chilled out, huh? Yeah, it looks like some of them. So tell me what you were saying earlier about you found the perfect temperature to store your crabs at. Well, hey, they was telling me to put it at 53, and I put it at 43. And I noticed the crabs I keep in here for three or four days. You might have a few dead ones, but yeah. you're not going to have So you crabs. tried 53 and you were seeing... Yeah, when I had that 53, I come back and I'd have two or three dozen. Now I might have, you know, maybe one dozen. Okay. Maybe, maybe less sometimes. Yeah, and do you keep a wet sack on them? Is that... Well, yeah, that's kind of damp. Yeah, dry, yeah. It don't matter. It's mainly just to keep that the, the, um, air from the air conditioning. Oh, the um, air directly. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. That's interesting, man. All right, y'all, so there's your magic temperature for keeping crabs alive. 43. Look at that beautiful. These are twos? That's twos, yeah. Wow, well, that's some beautiful I mean, that's twos. That's today's twos, right? Well, right. Whenever I'm picking them up for the cold. Right. This crab's still alive. Yeah, he's alive. Oh, yeah. Keep him. Yeah, you just chill them out. You know, it's so hot this time of year, they can't stand that heat just like we can't stand the heat. Yeah, you're right. If you don't keep this um, keep from covered, man, that wind from the, um, the um, air from the air conditioning. You know? Right. So y'all do this every Friday. Every Friday, yeah. Pretty awesome. Much. Um, unless I'm unless I get other group uh, other orders like they right. every Friday we're gonna boil, so I'll get them. Unless okay. Otherwise, I'll yeah. Verify. That's awesome. And you catch them yourself too. Catch them, catch them myself. Usually sell everything else to a wholesaler and um, right and keep, keep with, whatever we need. Yeah. And whatever I got. Any sales on the side, you know, always keep them. Look at this big old boiling pot George has got. That's a serious pot there, folks. I can probably boil like 120 pounds, like that at a time. Can you say that again? I boil like somewhere around 120 pounds at a time in that pot. So that's wow. why I got a bigger pot. But yeah. I didn't realize it was a crab, uh, crawfish boiling pot. Mm. And it gives another step to the right, right, job, right, right. You know? Ooh, man, nice rusty crab. Showing that crab. Look at that, y'all. Yeah, it's late. You can always tell when they're live pretty much by the way yeah, they get closed beautiful. and not sagging all the way down. Nice. Yeah, so I usually go through them and make sure there ain't no dead ones because if you boil dead crab, when people go to eat them, they'll know right away because yeah, they're right. mushy. Right. And I got um, a couple of fat females that I found, so I said, well, why not? Um, yeah. You don't Check get that out. often, no, huh? No, not this time. What are some of the common things people say when they see, you know, just come to this place first time, get you, get offered all these beautiful bald crabs? They say, whatever it is you're doing, keep doing it, because it is they are <laughs> excellent. <laughs> that's what they tell me. So that's, that's awesome. Um, that's um, definitely um, makes me feel good that I'm doing something yeah. right over here, right? So do you get people from all over, like, the south, all over the country? Where, where are people coming from? Sure, we have people coming to eat crabs from all over the world because we have we do tours. So um, they come down here to do a tour, and then when they find out we got bald crabs, they come do them, wow. buy some. But they all, most of the people from up north Louisiana, they eat them um, like um, what they call that, um, where they put this butter and stuff on them. They don't boil them like us. Yeah, they, um, they put them steam. on the pit. Steam yeah. them, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right. And um, they said, I don't know why y'all boil them like that, man. <laughs> Seems like the way we do it's better, and I'm like, well, I guess everybody's got their own way. Everybody's got right? their own way. That's right. We'll eat them any kind of way they serve them. That's right. As long as they um, 
Alive when we cook them, right? That's right. <laughs> All right, folks. Now, I want you to understand how unique that is. This is not only the fisherman, but the cook. That does not happen anywhere else here in St. Bernard. you got to come here to do that because you're not going to get it anywhere else. There's really not too, too many places to get boiled crab. This isn't like Maryland. This isn't like the Northeast. We really, really make our money in our market on shrimp and to a lesser extent, crawfish. But bald crabs is a little bit of a hard thing to get uh, for the general public. So this is a great place to come, tour the bayou, learn about what's out there, learn about the animals, learn about the infrastructure, and then come back to the little spot here and have some bald crabs, have you something cold to sip on. Y'all got to come see them here at Happiness Bayou Tours in Violet, Louisiana. Look them up. Come see them. You got plenty of time left before it gets too cold we don't really even get cold till january so plan your trip now come see these folks we're gonna hang out for a little while then we're going out on the boat then we're coming back to eat crab i got a hard day ahead of me folks wish me luck so yeah. what a, a, what is a number two crab number two is a male crab um like this like under six inches and it's okay. got to be um hard to the touch when you touch the the, the shell it's got to be hard no no uh, play in it like it don't move or anything and it can't be transparent looking. Usually if it's right. transparent, there's no meat. Uh, okay. um, so when you got that rusty color on, most of the time, there is sometimes you might get one that ain't so fat, but right. most of the time these are fat crabs. And these suckers go through something. And like how this. much do y'all charge? Like what, it, what when somebody wants to come eat crabs, what do y'all charge for that? You charge about a dozen. Um, I believe it's 25, a dozen for um, if you sit inside and eat. Mm -hmm. If you stay inside and eat, it's 25 a dozen. If you eat, um, you take the crabs to go, I believe it's 30 a dozen. Gotcha. So they give you a break if you stay inside right. and drink beer and that. And right, then, um, right, right, right. With your crabs, you get them better. Even if you don't drink beer, you just get them cheaper for staying inside. Yeah. Keep them here. So I'll let them sit. Usually until the water, I get the water boiling. Sometimes they can be in here. But it, it don't take long to get this water boiling. I can get this thing cranked up right now. Yeah, right. Dry out, then you bring it up. All right, so here it is, folks. They also have a little tavern inside here so that before or after you go on your tour, you can go have something cold to drink, whatever it is you like. Here is their little dock where you can hang out. If you are a patron, you can do a little bit of fishing. I mean, look at this, folks. There's George's crab boat hanging out. And then you get on the tour boat here. This is the tour boat. Check that out. Nice little spot, y'all. Ooh, look at all the fish he's got in here. That is cool. Check that out. All right, so tell us what you're doing there. I'm putting the lemons in, and uh, that's what I usually do. I put the lemons in first, um, just so they can, uh, the peels, that uh, they get caught underneath their strainer, and it helps to cook the, um, the, the oil out the peels. Put them in the crate. Something that ain't broke. <laughs> right, so 
tell us about you know just being from St. Bernard, growing up in St. Bernard. What made y'all want to start this business? Well, I was always born and raised right here on this body from my backyard. So um, I don't know. I just always said I'd love to be able to work doing something that I love to do. You know, and so here we are. They love to talk about how authentic the tour was, how it doesn't feel commercial, it feels very personal, and they love that. They love that it is, is not commercial, that it's very personal and authentic, and they love George. They say he's <laughs> funny, <laughs> they can tell it's not scripted, that yeah. he's just talking as he's going, and a lot of them have said, I felt like I stepped off the boat with a new friend. Yeah. Just because that's how he makes people feel. But, and I always tell them, that's how it is in second art. That's how we all treat people. Mm. Yes, yes. So tell us, what's this giant structure we just went through? That's the um, violet flood box, the, the floodgate. It's um, once you're in the inside of that structure right there, you're in, um, you're in protection from storms. You're protected from from high seas and um, what they call it, uh, surge. Surge. You, you're protected from storm surge, up to a category three storm. So hopefully, if everything works right, the wall will keep on doing its job and we'll stay dry <laughs> on the inside. You know. I don't ever want to stay for another one. I stayed for Katrina and I, I, that was enough for me. That was enough. So now here's our weekend um, hangout. This is our camp. You come out here at night, you hear things, you don't know what they are, and you really don't care. Enough. You know, it's so, so crazy. Um, and the mosquitoes carry you away if you're not inside that screened in porch. Check that out. Now, you do stop here on a tour, right? I stop here on a tour. Usually, um, people need to use the bathroom if they're drinking or something like that. Um, or some people might uh, can't handle the waves in the boat or whatever, right. and kind of roughness. Or some people just don't like boats. Yeah, they right. Up, they come on because their friends are coming. And I'll have to drop them off here and let them sit in until the tours are coming yeah, back man. in. Beautiful. Telling you, you gotta come hang out with the folks from Happiness. It's just a hangout. That's really all it is. You, you just, it's, it's, it, you're booking a trip to hang out with George, hang out with Sammy, have something cold to drink, eat some crabs. So a lot of times when I'm promoting these St. Bernard videos, it's like you come here, you, you catch this, you set out nets, you rig up your rods, your reels. This is just a chill thing to come do. I don't feel like right right now I gotta catch fish. I gotta catch crabs. I gotta like it's so chill. You gotta come try this out. And I know when we get back, there's gonna be something good to eat. So a lot of times we are telling you to come down here, come fishing, come hunting, come try something. This time I'm telling you, giving you the pass to come down here and chill with the folks at happiness, because it's gonna be a good time. And only the claws had to eat. And I'm like, well, you sure it was an hour? Yeah, don't sound right. Well you didn't have the right amount of feet in trees like this where you can come underneath. It's like 10 degree, 10 degrees cooler under here than it is out just under this top. Right. And I believe this is where the gate is like to hang out because it's cooler right now. It's not really under here. Yeah. Check this out, folks. This could be you sitting right here, hanging out, enjoying the sights, asking Captain George all the questions about the cool things you're seeing. Beautiful live oak trees everywhere. I mean, we're in a tunnel. Look at that, folks. It don't get no prettier than that. What's up, buddy? Wave your white napkin. <laughs> I, re I, I quit. I quit. Took you long enough. So out here, you never see any farm raised alligators. Like, I noticed when I was across the river working, I, I worked and they had a lot of gators and they would have notches in their tail. Mm -hmm. um, that um, reflects that it's farm raised. So they got, um, and then they got them clips on their back feet, and I never see any of them out yeah. here like that. So I don't know if they ever release gators here, but um, I know all the way up until Hurricane Katrina, we never had alligators down here. As a kid growing up, I don't ever remember seeing gators back here um, because it was all salt water, and gators don't like salt water. And now that the brackish, they, they blocked that mist to go off, 
Um, now the Gators are back. I think they're back with a vengeance. <laughs> This is um, Ooh. this is Mama. Ooh. She's a little feisty. Too close. She's too close. She's been feisty um, lately. I think the water's a little warm and she gets mad at me. Yeah. But I'm gonna let her go over here so we can look get the big boy. Pick her up real quick. Let's see. Oh no! Uh uh! Don't come over here with She'll that. She'll bite your fingers right off. Yeah, yeah no, I ain't getting them. close. No sir, not me. That is a cool animal, though. And what's that one's name? This is Mama, and she's between, what, around 15 and 30, something like that. Wow. Um, so, for measurements that they, they tell us how, yeah. how to do it. And you see them old beady eyes, huh? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And I ain't getting no closer than that, <laughs> unless I'm back there where you are. Check that out, folks. I mean, that's worth the trip right there, just to come see that. Just to come see that thing. But, that <laughs> is not where it ends. That is not where it ends. That is not where it ends. It gets a lot bigger. <laughs> no way. No friggin' way. Dude, that thing's as big as my dog. Oh my this guy gosh. Right here is like um, around 90 pounds. Wow. Um, somewhere between 70 and 100 years old. He'll wow. bite your hand off. Pretty That's much. what y'all gotta come see, folks. Look at this guy. What's his name? He's Papa. Papa. Mama and Papa. Yep. And I ain't getting no closer than Papa that. Papa is Look like, at this guy. When he raises his head up against my fingers, it feels like somebody's pressing my fingers in a uh, door. Yeah, and right. He's pressing it shut. Look at him. He's trying to go now. He's like, hey, buddy. Wow. Watch your leg. But all I'm gonna right, get all his little slime off of him. Yeah, right. I'm right. gonna scrub him down one day. There you um, go. I don't know. Look I'm going to get out. That is a beast. There he is, y'all. That is a monster. Jeez. That is crazy, crazy. That thing's right there. They say, they say that um, I was talking to this guy and over at the wildlife, and he told me that these things can adapt to under ice. Like if this was to freeze over, as long as it's not solid, yeah. just a layer of ice on it, they can adapt and live underneath the ice until it uh, thaws out. They're amazing creatures. Yeah. There's something to do with their, how they regulate their heart and all that. I think that's amazing. All right, well, we worked hard. We did all we needed to do. I think we need to go eat, huh? I'm we need to go see what's up with these crabs. Yep. That's right. Let's go check them out. For sure. Well, what you think, bro? Looks like looks like a plan, huh? You normally probably too busy to enjoy your own work, huh? Oh yeah, I never oh. sit down and eat them like this. <laughs> I usually sit out there by the and, um, sweat, sweating my um, yeah. butt off, you know. Right. And, you know. All right, now y'all got to see a little bit of the tour. We didn't give you the full experience because we still want y'all to book a tour here with them here at Happiness Bayou Tour. So definitely get on that. But now the crabs are ready. But before we get to eating, Sammy, who makes the crab cakes here. From scratch, she picks crabs for the crab cakes. So when you come, not only get the crabs, you have to get the crab cakes too. She's going to show us a little bit about how she works her magic. This is a female. This is a male. That's okay. how you tell the difference female, between a female male. and male. Okay. So uh, I'll pick the... I guess I'll pick the female. You want to do the female? Okay. Yes. I think it matters. And this is how I pick the crab to get the crab meat for the crab cake. that a mm. lot of people love to eat. But that doesn't go in the crab cake. This does not go in the crab cake. But I'm putting it aside because I am gonna eat it. 
Okay, so now we're gonna clean it. Uh, there's a soup that people make called she crab soup, mm -hmm. and all of this fat is used oh. in it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. She crab. She crab. She crab. For obvious reasons. Right. <laughs> Okay, so you'll just put the meat. He was here this morning. I pick off the extra oh, wow. shell just to make the process easier. Right. Ah, that's the ticket right there, huh? It is for me. Yeah, that's smart. Getting those, detaching yeah, those claws from the knuckles is important. And also cutting these in half is important. Right. And just FYI, I do use claw meat also. I use the lump meat and the claw right, meat. Right, right. So, in one half you'll find a lot of basically just cavities that the meat mm -hmm. comes right out of. Wow. Oh, oh. That's how you pick them, right? You don't eat them that way, right? I do. You eat them the same way? Yeah. You pick them the same way you eat them? Yeah. And that's, <laughs> so, you know, you could see wow. that. Wow, you clean that thing mm -hmm. up. And then the other half of that half the meat's enclosed mm -hmm. in this side this cartilage so I just pull this little bit of shell off the top and then I just squeeze wow. from the bottom yeah. and you can pull the meat right out how about that Sometimes if it's really, really packed with meat, it doesn't come out that easy, but that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. That's it. And that's that's, it. that's half, a nice yield. Yeah, that's half of a half. I mean, that's half of the card. Right. Wow. All right, folks, well, you got to see a little bit of what they do here at Happiness Value Tours in beautiful St. Bernard Parish. Definitely book your trip. Come down and see these folks. Stay a while. Go fishing. Come fish off the dock with them. We appreciate y'all being here, and we'll see you when you get here.